Welcome to Essential English. Your journey to English mastery starts here. Whether you're a beginner or looking to level up your language skills, we've got you covered. Our channel is packed with engaging content that will make learning English a breeze. From grammar tips to vocabulary boosters, we've got it all. So grab your pens and get ready to dive into a world of words. Explore the pages of our virtual library where books come to life and knowledge awaits. Let our animated globes take you on a linguistic adventure around the world, discovering new cultures and expanding your horizons. Join our community of language enthusiasts and embark on a journey that will transform your English skills. So what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and let's start this exciting journey together. Essential English, your passport to fluency. Let's get started. Lesson 14. Wanted. Mr. Stewart. Charles I had been executed in 1649 and Cromwell became the ruler of England. But Charles Stuart, afterwards Charles II, the eldest son of Charles I, came to England secretly in 1650 and, aided by the Scots, attempted to regain the crown. On September 3, 1651, he fought a battle at Worcester. He was completely defeated and fled from the field. This is the background to the play that follows. Scene. The Coffee Room of the White Hart. Evesham. September 10, 1651. Robert, a waiter, has just shown in Sir Edgar Harcourt. A confused noise of voices is heard from the next room. Robert, you'll find it quieter in here. Sir, Harcourt, by the fireplace. Quieter, I can hardly hear myself speak. Shut those doors. Robert. They are shut. Sir. Harcourt. What a madhouse. I've tried three times to get a drink. Four to get a room. Robert. I'll see about a room. Sir. Harcourt. If that terrible noise is going on, you can save your breath. Where's the landlord? Footnotes. 1. No performance of this play may be given in public unless written permission has been obtained from. Messrs. Samuel French Limited, 26 Southampton Street, London, WC2. Robert. He's serving. Sir. Harcourt. Inform him Sir Edgar Harcourt has arrived. If that doesn't stir him, you can saddle my horses and I'll be off. Robert. Moving up to the doors. Yes. Sir. Harcourt. And bring me some wine. Robert goes out. The landlord enters. Landlord. Sir Edgar. Forgive us. We don't know where to turn. Harcourt. You're in the madhouse. Man. Landlord. It's the Ironsides. Returning every hour from Worcester. Foot soldiers. Cavalry. Gunners. Harcourt. And they call this peace. Landlord. I'll get you a room at the back. Harcourt. You'll get me some dinner. Landlord. Yes. Sir Edgar. Harcourt. Soup. Beef. Chicken. Landlord. Beef. Chicken. Harcourt. Your best Chateau Latour. Landlord. Chateau Latour. Harcourt. Stilton cheese and white wine. Landlord. At once. Sir. And you'll bear with us tonight. Harcourt. Plague on it. Man. I'm a roundhead. I'll drink with your noisy crowd. To Cromwell and victory. Landlord. Cromwell and victory. Harcourt. Well, we've waited long enough for it. Ten years to put these scoundrels in their place. Landlord. We've seen the last of them now. Sir. Harcourt. We've seen the last of more than them. Henry. In a quieter tone. We've seen the last of. Charles Stewart. He laughs softly to himself. Dead on the field of Worcester. There'll never be a king in England again. Landlord. Never a king in England. Robert enters with the wine. Robert. The gentleman's wine. Landlord. Put it on the table. Robert. And order Sir Edgar's dinner. Soup. Beef. Chicken and Chateau Latour. Robert. Putting the wine on the table. Yes. Sir. Landlord. And keep those doors closed. Robert. Yes. Sir. He goes out. Harcourt. Moving to the table for his drink. Well. 
It's good to see you even in this madhouse. Landlord. Sir Edgar. Harcourt. What is it? There is a slight pause. Landlord. There's no question. Is there? About Prince Charles. Harcourt. Question? Landlord. I mean. It is quite certain? Harcourt. What the devil do you mean? Landlord. I'd like to have it from your own lips. Harcourt. Angrily. Charles Stewart's body was found on the field of Worcester. He was thrown from his horse and cut down. There is a pause. Does that satisfy you? Landlord. Yes. Sir Edgar. Harcourt. Then why do you ask? He goes back to the fire. Landlord. Because in the sitting room they were betting three sovereigns to one. That he is alive. Philip Monsell enters. Monsell. Is this coffee room private? Landlord. No. Sir. This way. If you please. Monsell. Your sitting room's a little noisy. Harcourt. Charles Stewart alive. Landlord. Yes. Sir. Harcourt. Are they out of their senses? Monsell. Why should they be? Harcourt. I beg your pardon? Monsell. I said, why should they be? Quote. Harcourt. I haven't the pleasure of knowing you. Monsell. My name is Philip Monsell. In Tewkesbury they're betting four to one. There is a moment's silence. Harcourt. Four. Two one. Monsell. Yes. Harcourt. That Charles Stewart is alive? Monsell. Yes. Harcourt. It's nonsense. Monsell. No doubt. Harcourt. Absurd. The body's been found. Monsell. They say it was his double. Harcourt. His double? Monsell. A special bodyguard. The prince was. Seen crossing the Severn the same evening. And two days after in Ludlow. Harcourt. What's the evidence? Monsell. Sentries on the river. Townsfolk in Ludlow. Harcourt. Why have they kept silent? Monsell. They haven't. They were ordered to say nothing. Harcourt. It's a lie. A lie. I tell you. Set about by royalists to keep their cause alive. Charles Stewart's body rots on the field of Worcester. Monsell. I'll bet you five to one it does not. Harcourt. Five to one. Monsell. Here in this room. Harcourt. I don't bet. Sir. Monsell. A pity. Harcourt. If I did. I'd bet you a hundred sovereigns. That it does. Monsell. A pretty sum. Couldn't the landlord introduce us? Harcourt. I'll trouble you. Sir. Not to joke on this matter. If there's one word of truth in the rumor you're spreading. A shadow lies over England. The dawn of peace is being blotted out. Monsell. That's a matter of opinion. Sir. Harcourt. Opinion. Sir. Monsell. Charles was a gay prince. He should be alive. To keep the roundheads on their toes. Harcourt. Treason. I say. Landlord. Now. Gentlemen. Harcourt. A sword. Landlord. Sir Edgar. Monsell. Putting up his hand. One moment. Sir. If you want to do me an injury. Why not rob me of 500 sovereigns? Harcourt. 500. Monsell. Quietly. I'll take your bet. At the terms I offered. Harcourt. I've already told you. Monsell. I am a poor man. I'd feel 500 more than your sword. There is a slight pause. Harcourt. You would. Sir? Harcourt faces Monsell. Very well. Then. I'll not rob you of 500. I'll rob you of 5,000. Landlord. 5,000. Harcourt. I'll bet you a thousand sovereigns to five. That Charles Stewart is dead. Landlord. Sir Edgar. I beg you. Harcourt. Keep out of this. Henry. He turns to Monsell. You hear me, sir? One thousand sovereigns to five that Charles Stewart is dead. Monsell. I hear you, sir. After a pause. There is one small point. How will the bet be decided? Harcourt. In this way, if Charles Stewart is not proved alive in a fortnight, he will be taken as dead. Monsell. If Charles is not proved alive in a fortnight, he will be taken as dead. Harcourt. Is that clear? 
Monsal, quite clear. Harcourt, is the bet taken? There is a slight pause. Monsal, taken. There is a moment's silence. The two men stand facing each other. Harcourt, my name is Edgar Harcourt. My address is Chevalier Manor. Devises, I shall return there tomorrow. Monsal, I am Philip Monsal. I live at 17 High Holborn in the city of London. I am at your service. Harcourt, Landlord, you are witness to this bet. Landlord, but, gentlemen, I beg, voice, from the parlor, in the name of the Parliament of England. Silence for a proclamation from Hampton Court. Harcourt, what the devil, voice, given under the hand of Oliver Cromwell, commander-in-chief of the Puritan forces. The sound of voices dies to a murmur. Harcourt, open those doors. The landlord moves up and opens the doors. Sergeant Tryon, wanted, Mr. Stewart. Harcourt, below his breath, dear heaven, sergeant, although it is commonly accepted that Charles Stewart, leader of the royalist forces, was cut down and left for dead on the field of Worcester. A measure of doubt now exists. Evidence has been received that Mr. Stewart crossed the Severn on the night of September 3rd, and was seen two days later in the town of Ludlow. Mr. Stewart may be at large or in hiding in the counties of Worcester, Shropshire, Hereford or Oxford, for his capture or information leading to it. A reward of £1,000, for hiding his whereabouts or helping his escape. The penalty of death, given under our seal, Hampton Court, September 9, 1651, Harcourt, slowly, it isn't possible, it can't be, Sergeant, Corporals Britton and Fox, search the inn, Harcourt, at large or in hiding, Landlord, hastily, excuse me, gentlemen, Monsal, close those doors, the Landlord goes out, closing the doors, there is a moment's pause. 1,000 sovereigns. Harcourt. Nothing is proved. I tell you. Monsal. Nothing yet. Harcourt. It's a trick. A royalist plot. Monsal. No doubt. Harcourt. It'll break down. They'll have to confess. Monsal. Shall we increase the bet? Harcourt. We'll increase nothing. Robert enters. Monsal. Ah. Waiter. A drink. Robert, glass of wine, sir, Monsal, two glasses, Harcourt, to Robert, what's, what's happening in there, Robert, they're searching the inn, sir, Harcourt, this inn, Robert, yes, sir, Harcourt, do they imagine he's here, Robert, they're searching every inn in the country, Harcourt, Satan, don't they know what the man looks like, he wears, a full-bottomed wig, a mustache no gentleman would dare, has black eyes, and sunken cheeks, you could pick him out of a, thousand, and they're looking for him here? Robert, yes, sir, Harcourt, well, tell them they're mad, mad, they hear me? If they want Charles Stewart, they'll have to dig for him. Robert, yes, sir, Monsal, and bring two glasses of wine. Robert goes out. Harcourt, completely mad. Monsal, after a pause. You know, Sir Edgar, it wouldn't be out of the question to shave off that mustache. Harcourt, let him shave it. Monsal, or to remove a full-bottomed wig. Harcourt, remove it. Monsal, it would make a difference. Harcourt, he can't change his face. Monsal, thoughtfully, I don't know. Wax and plaster have worked wonders. I heard of a Huguenot who lived two years in his own town. Unrecognized, the Marquis de Charon served as a footman at the Tuileries under sentence of death. Harcourt, this is England. Sir, we've eyes in our heads. Monsal, we shall need them. Sergeant Tryon enters. Sergeant, your names. Gentlemen, Harcourt, sharply. Who the devil are you? Sir? Sergeant. Sergeant Tryon of the Oxford Garrison. In the name of the Parliament. Harcourt. 
Now look here. Sergeant. Names. Business and destination. Harcourt. If you think you've come to any purpose. Sergeant. I must trouble you. Sir. Monsell. Philip Monsell of High Holborn. London. Gentleman. Traveling to Shrewsbury. Sergeant. When did you arrive? Monsell. Five minutes ago. Sergeant. On horse? Monsell. By coach. Sergeant. And leaving? Monsell. Tomorrow. Sergeant. To Harcourt. Yours. Sir? Harcourt. Edgar Harcourt. Knight. Chevalier Manor. Devises. Sergeant. Arrived? Harcourt. This moment. Sergeant. A guest? Harcourt. For the night. Now look here. Sergeant. Have you knowledge of the whereabouts of Charles Stewart? Harcourt. First hand. Sergeant. What is it? Harcourt. Feeding the worms of Worcester. Sergeant. Speak to the point. Sir. Harcourt. It is the point. Sir. Sergeant. Then it may interest you to know. That Charles Stewart was reported last night. In this town. There is a moment's complete silence. Harcourt. In this town? Sergeant. You heard me. Monsell. After a pause. Has he been seen? Sergeant. No. Monsell. Then how? Sergeant. A royalist gave evidence in Hereford. He pauses. The town is being searched from top to bottom. No one may enter or leave without permission. If he is here, we shall get him. He turns to the door. That is all. Gentlemen. Good night. He goes out. The two men stand facing each other. The landlord hurries in. Landlord. Forgive me. Gentlemen. I was kept back by the sergeant. Your drinks are coming. Monsell. You heard. Landlord. What he said. Landlord. The prince reported in Evesham. It sounds like a fairy tale. Harcourt. Mechanically. A fairy tale. Monsell. Where do you imagine he could be? Landlord. I don't know. Sir. There are some great houses in the neighborhood. The Trevors. The Mainwarings. The Blakeneys. They'll be turned inside out. God help them. If they find him. Monsell. God help me. Landlord. If they don't. Landlord. You. Sir. Monsell. I shall lose 5,000 pounds. Landlord. 5,000 pounds. Monsell. Have you forgotten? The bet? Landlord. By Our Lady. Sir. Monsell. If Charles is not found alive in a fortnight. I have lost those are the terms. Sir Edgar? Harcourt. Those are the terms. Monsell. So Godspeed to the arrest of Charles. Landlord. Godspeed. Monsell. And I tell you. He won't make it easy. He's the cleverest man in England and will beat us yet. Landlord. He won't beat me. Sir. Harcourt. Nor me. Monsell. He's beaten us all for a week. Slipped through four counties and kept an army guessing. Why? He faces them. I'll tell you. Because they are looking for a ghost they are looking for the ghost of Charles Stewart. And there is not one trace of Charles Stewart left. Every detail has been changed. Clothes. Voice. Features. Manner of walking. Character. Every mark and detail of the man we know. His. Voice dropping. Except one. He pauses. The one thing a man may never change. Because he does not know he possesses it. Harcourt. What is that? Robert enters with drinks. Robert. The gentleman's drinks. Landlord. On the table. Robert. Harcourt. What is that? Monsell. A mannerism. There is a pause. He smiles quietly at them. Robert puts the drinks on the table. Some trick of the hand. The slight movement of an eyelid. Unknown to each of us and with us all our days. Charles Stewart has a mannerism. Monsell and Harcourt go to the table for their drink. Robert crosses the room to attend to the fire. Landlord. He has. Harcourt. What is it? Monsell. Smiling. There's a reward. For the answer. Landlord. But if you know. Harcourt. Sharply. How do you know? Monsell. I was two years in the palace of Whitehall. Teacher to Prince Henry. I had time to observe. 
Prince Charles. Harcourt. It is your duty to the Parliament to speak. Monsell. Gently. My duty to myself. For six thousand. Harcourt. Then there's no fear you'll forget it. Monsell. Smiling. No fear. And yet. Sir Edgar. I wonder. Harcourt. Wonder. Sir. Monsell. Whether future generations would approve. Harcourt. This is treason. Landlord. Between them. Sir Edgar. Harcourt. Explain yourself. Monsell. A man who can defy England for a week. Has the makings of a king. Harcourt. I tell you. Sir. England is tired of kings. Monsell. She is tired of tyranny. She will never tire of kings. The people will respect a parliament. They will die for a king. Putting down his empty glass. Shall we go into supper? Harcourt. I think it is high time. He puts down his glass. Landlord. Moving up. I'll show you to your rooms. Harcourt. About to follow. But stops. And one last word. Sir. I thank heaven that the betrayal of a king will save you 6,000 sovereigns. It assures me our parliament is safe. Landlord. This way. Sir. Harcourt goes out. Followed by the landlord. There is a moment's silence. Monsell. Smiling. Sir Edgar underrates me. He values a dream at 6,000. Don't you reckon that cheap? Robert? Robert. I see his point of view. Sir. Monsell. You see his point of view? Then I am a fool and a madman. Do you read Mr. Shakespeare? Robert. Mr. Shakespeare. Sir? Monsell. A playwright who died 30 years ago. Robert. I'm afraid not. Sir. Monsell. He has a line in The Prince of Denmark. Ophelia. Speaking of Prince Hamlet. Says. The expectancy and rose of the fair state. The glass of fashion and the mold of form. Could you betray. Such a one? Robert. I'm afraid I could. Sir. Monsell. You could? Robert. His father was a traitor. Like father. Like son. Monsell. Cold reasoning. Robert. May it reap its reward. The way to the supper room? Robert. Moving to the doors. This way. Sir. Monsell goes to the door and turns. Monsell. And by the way. Robert. When you do your evil deed. Perhaps you'll inform the king that there was one man who would not betray him. For six thousand. Robert. I will inform him. Sir. Monsell. Tell me. Robert. Do you believe that? Robert. I'm afraid. Sir. You would have to prove it. Monsell. It has been my privilege. He pauses. His hand on the door. Facing Robert. To Robert. Good night. Your Majesty. The curtain falls. Verb study. 2. Call. And they call this piece. Page 128. Here are some other idioms with call. His son is called. Equals name. William. The drowning man called. Out. Equals cried. For help. The ship calls at. Equals stops at. Gibraltar. When you are in the village will you please call at the greengrocers and get some oranges? The play at the theater starts at 7.30. I will call for you at 7 o'clock. I want breakfast at 8 o'clock so will you please call equals waken me at 7 30 mr smith is not at home he was called away equals asked to go somewhere on business i know his name but i can't just call it to mind equals remember it a strike of railway men has been called equals ordered beginning on november 1st if you are near my home any time call in equals come and see me prepositions six over. The various uses and meanings of over can be seen in the following sentences. There was a mirror over the fireplace. Clouds came over the sky. There were dust sheets over the furniture. That picture cost over 10,000 pounds. He couldn't enter for the examination because he was over age. Equals more than. There is a bridge over the river. He jumped over the wall. Equals above and across. The king is ruler over the whole nation. A captain is over a lieutenant. 
They sat a long time over their dinner. Equals while having dinner. He fell asleep over a book. Equals while reading. Over is often used as an adverb expressing 1. Distance. E.g. Here, in Britain, we are having hot weather. But over in America they are having snowstorms. 2. Movement. The exact meaning depending on the verb used with over. E.g. To fall over. To knock over. Bend over. Hand over. Turn over. The milk boiled over. Etc. 3. Finished. E.g. The war is over. All your troubles are now over. 4. Remaining. E.g. I paid the bill and have three pounds over. 5. Too much. More than is proper. E.g. The meat is overcooked. I was overcharged for these goods. He is overworked. Past. Past. Preposition. Has the meaning, beyond. E.g. It is past six o'clock. Half past three. The old horse is past work. She walked past my door. Equals up to and beyond. Past. Adverb. The years went past he saw me but walked past without speaking. Round. Round expresses. 1. Position. E.g. There was a rope round the tree. 2. Movement. More or less circular. E.g. He walked round the house. Drake sailed round the world. Similarly as an adverb. He went into the garden and walked round. Turn round. Advertisement. Our dresses not only make you look slim. They make men look round. Since. Since expresses from a definite point of time in the past until now. E.g. I have been here since 4 o'clock. Since is generally used with a perfect tense. Compare this with for which expresses a length of time till now. E.g. I have been here for 2 hours. Since is also an adverb. E.g. I saw him last Christmas. I haven't seen him since. Through. Through. Preposition and adverb. Expresses. 1. Position or movement usually from one side to the other. E.g. He knocked a nail through the wood. The train rushed through the tunnel. Look through the window. Air comes in through the ventilator. We went through France on our way to Switzerland. He has come through a lot of difficulties. He read the book through. Will you please read through my essay? 2. Time. E.g. He talked about it all through dinner. The railway line was repaired through the night when the trains were not running. 3. Agency. E.g. He bought the property through a house agent. He got the job through. Equals by the influence of. His uncle. 2. To expresses. 1. Direction of movement. E.g. I am going to London. Come to me. 2. A limit. E.g. Classes are from 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock. He was faithful to the last end. He read the paper from beginning to end. 3. Comparison. E.g. This car is superior, inferior, equal to that one. What he said to you is nothing to what he said to me. 2 is used. A. As part of the infinitive. E.g. I want to go home. He said that to frighten you. B. With an indirect object. E.g. Give that to me. I lost a lot of money to him. 2 is not much used as an adverb. It is an adverb in. Pull the door to. The work must be done. So set to. Equals get to work. Towards. Toward. Reposition only. Towards expresses one. In the direction of. E.g. Go towards the window. Their house faces towards the south. 2. Approaching. Of time. E.g. I hope to arrive towards 6 o'clock. Shakespeare's best comedies were written towards the end of the 16th century. 3. With regard to. E.g. I have always felt kindly towards him. Exercises. 1. Word study. Use the following words or phrases in sentences of your own. Confused. Use also confusion. Landlord. What is the feminine form? Inform. Use also information. Saddle. Verb. Saddle is also a noun. It is part of the harness of a horse. Where does one put the saddle? 
Find out the meaning of reins, stirrups, spurs, forgive. What are the principal parts of this verb? Sideboard. Name six other articles of furniture. Sigh. Note the pronunciation. Sigh. Scoundrel. Corpse. Bet. Sovereign. Two meanings of this word. Private. Use also privacy. What is the opposite of a private room in a hotel? Evidence. Sentry. Fraud. Rot. Introduce. Rumor. Don. What is the opposite? Toes. Use the idioms, from top to toe. To tread on someone's toes. To walk on tiptoe. Treason. Residence. Witness. Proclamation. Murmur. Accept. County. Don't confuse with country. Note the pronunciation of each. County. Country. Capture. Whereabouts. Penalty. Trick. Increase. What is the opposite? Imagine. Mustache. Is this the same as whiskers? How do we describe a man who has neither mustache nor whiskers? Wig. Sunken cheeks. This is one form of the past participle of sink. Give the other one. Exile. Destination. A fairy tale. Inside out. Use also upside down. From top to bottom. Back to front. Slip. Ghost. Mannerism. Eyelid. Use also eyebrow. Eyelash. Eyeball. Generations. Approve. Defy. Note the pronunciation defy. Use also defiance. Defiantly. Tyranny. Use also tyrant. Tyrannical. Underates. What is the opposite? Use it in a sentence. Playwright. Mold. Reap. What is the opposite? Evil. Privilege. To. Explain. Or say in another way. Each of the following expressions which occurred in the play that you have just read. 1. Are they out of their senses? 2. There is no question about Prince Charles being dead. 3. I'd like to have it from your own lips. 4. I beg your pardon. This can be used in several situations. State what you think it meant when used on page 130. 5. They are betting 4 to 1. 6. No doubt. Page 130. See remark on number. 4. 7. They say it was his double. 8. Why have they kept silent? 9. They were hushed up. 10. A pity. Page 131. See remark on number. 4. 11. I'll trouble you not to joke on this matter. 12. That is a matter of opinion. 13. To keep the roundheads on their toes. 14. If he is not proved alive, he will be taken as dead. 15. A proclamation given under the hand of Oliver Cromwell. 16. It is commonly accepted that Charles Stewart is dead. 17. A measure of doubt now exists. 18. Mr. Stewart may be at large. 19. For helping his escape the penalty of death. 20. You could pick him out of a thousand. 21. It wouldn't be out of the question to shave off that mustache. 22. Under sentence of death. 23. We have eyes in our heads. 24. His voice dropped. 25. There is no fear you'll forget. 26. He has the makings of a king. 27. I think it is high time. 28. Don't you reckon that cheap? 29. Like father. Like son. 30. It has been my privilege. 3. Comprehension exercise. Answer the following. In your own words as far as possible. Using only material contained in the play. Use one complete sentence for each answer. 1. Who is Mr. Stewart? 2. Why did the landlord think there was some doubt about Prince Charles being dead? 3. What was Monsell's evidence that the prince was alive? 4. What were the terms of the bet that Monsell made with Harcourt? 5. What were the terms? For reward or for penalty? In Cromwell's proclamation? 6. Give Harcourt's description of Prince Charles. 7. How did Monsell think that Charles could change his appearance? 8. What was the one thing he thought the prince could not change? Why couldn't he change that? 9. 
Why did Mansell know that he could recognize the prince? 10. What was the dream that Mansell thought was worth more than £6,000? 11. Explain Mansell's final remark. 4. Use the following idioms in sentences of your own. Call out. Call at. Call in. Call off. Call for. Call away. Call up. Call on. Call a spade a spade. 5. Composition exercises. 1. Tell, in your own words, the story of the play. 2. Write a short story or play of your own, having as title, loyalty. Thank you for joining us on Essential English. We hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Remember, learning English can be fun and exciting, just like our little friend here. Don't miss out on more engaging English lessons by subscribing to our channel and hitting the bell icon. Stay connected with us and join us next time on Essential English. Together, let's unlock the world of language.